Hello everyone, this is Paul Zarling. Hope everyone's doing well. This is my presentation on identity theft and consumer privacy. It's titled, The Hackers, Scammers, Fraudsters, and Crooks Are Getting More Creative, The Latest Intelligence on Identity Security and Consumer Privacy. And for those which may this is the first time you've heard me or seen me, this is about the third presentation I've given on this topic over the years. Uh, my background has been in both public and traded and private companies over 20 years, uh, both here in the U.S. and around the globe. My undergrad is from Martin Luther College, and my MBA is from Marquette University. And so I'm pretty excited about the basketball season. Uh, hopefully they continue to do well and get a decent seating in the uh, March Madness. But we'll see what happens here in the coming weeks. And the second question I get a lot is, besides who are you, uh, why do you do this? And so when you look at client first and you look at our core values and how we uh, love our clients, we're a fiduciary, we take care of them, we have their best interests in mind, uh, very similar to how a doctor has is your best interest in mind. Um, we take a look at all the different financial pieces and put it together. That's our true holistic process that allows you to have the financial confidence you deserve. But along with that is, hey, how do we help you keep your information secure so you're not exposed to fraud and losing money? And that's the big reason why. So I'm going to go through some information today that's going to upset you, that's going to give you a lot of concern, may scare you. Uh, but what we need to come out of here is knowing that you have the information, you have the knowledge, and then you're going to have uh, an outlook and toolkits on how to fix things or prevent things. So I want you to remember three M's. I want you to remember uh, minimizing your exposure. I want you to remember um, monitoring your accounts. And I want you to remember um, managing the damage. Uh, when you're compromised. You know how the toolkit's both proactive and reactive to be able to handle that. Because at the end of the day, uh, identity security and consumer privacy, it is personal. Uh, there's a picture of my family, my wife and, and seven kids uh, from age range from kindergarten all the way up to college, and they all have their own identities. Um, they all have their own interests. At the same time, that doesn't, that doesn't stop um, a hacker from trying to get any of their information and use it for their own gains. And it used to be, you know, Maybe you had to worry about uh, somebody around the corner from you. Um, maybe it was somebody in another state. But lately, it's actually another foreign government. Uh, so for a lot of you, maybe you remember the Equifax data breach. Equifax is one of the three credit uh, scoring providers, uh, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. Equifax was hacked. Huge news. And wouldn't you know, the Chinese military intelligence was behind it. So now you have a government that's indiscriminately targeting innocent Americans on a massive scale. And so that's when I say minimize, monitor, and manage um, because you now have to defend yourself against foreign governments. You have to defend yourself against um, groups of individuals that may be in your state, in your town, or maybe even somewhere, you know, somewhere else in the globe. And so my point is this is not to... Um, you know, get you all upset and riled up, it's to really take a look at the information, take a look at the tools, and to be able to defend yourself. And so when it comes to China, sure the government that's a problem. Um, I actually enjoy going to Shanghai and Hong Kong. I enjoy the cuisine, enjoy the culture. Uh, we have friends that uh, host Chinese students. though They're not the problem. Uh, culture's not the problem. It's really just the Chinese military um, targeting innocent American citizens. And so uh, when we look at identity theft, Yes, I've talked about a foreign government, but the reality is there's a lot of things that we need to cover uh, than just that today. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the top 10 scams in 2019, uh, pardon me, targeting information. Number six really freaked me out, and you'll know why when I get there. Uh, the five biggest hacks in 2019 and lessons learned, there's really three main ones that we're going to talk about there. Uh, update on important regulations you need to know about. Uh, I talked about two last year. I'll give you an update and kind of what's going on here in the U.S. at the state and federal level. Things we're watching out for in 2020, and you should too. These are things that we feel are going to be gaining steam um, over the course of the next one to three years. And then we're going to have your identity and privacy security toolkit. That includes some bonus tools and helpful glossary. Um, uh, because you, you, you are going to need to have it. You're going to have tools that are going to be proactive for you, and you're going to have tools that are going to be reactive for you. Uh, I have a self-diagnostic uh, identity theft quiz so you can see kind of how you do or how you think, how well you think you may do. Uh, it'll be pretty eye-opening. Either you're doing a lot of things well or, oh my goodness, 
I really got to make some changes here. And it really comes down to the daily disciplines of how to um, minimize, monitor, and, and manage uh, your identity information. And then I have a helpful glossary for you as well. And all of those will be available digitally. So I'll put those links in, in uh, below here uh, underneath the, uh, the YouTube link. But first, I want to level set with everyone. I get a lot of questions on, hey, what is the cloud? Uh, a lot of people know what it is. Um, but for those that don't, uh, it is really, uh, it used to be all your computing power and connection was all on your, your own uh, computer. Uh, but now that's kind of gone to servers or uh, storage software applications, which are off-site. It could be somewhere in the U.S. It could be somewhere in Europe. It could be somewhere in Asia. It really doesn't matter. As long as you have that Internet connection point, it allows you to connect to it wirelessly or by wire. Uh, so you have your PC, your computer, your tablet, your smartphone, a printer, whatever device it is. Um, it allows you to get into social media. It allows you to get into banking. It allows you to get into online shopping. It allows you to get into your email. Any, any door, shall we say, uh, getting into the digital world uh, is going to be backed up by uh, cloud computing. And why that's important to know is that's where the hackers are going to try to find information. They're going to try to hack the cloud. I mean, there's going to be some serious security around these servers, both physical and, and digital. Uh, but they're going to look for weaker points. And so does someone have a, a really bad or a weak passcode? Uh, does someone make a human error? Uh, is there a virus which we can get in uh, that can do some of the work for us? Uh, all these different things that can happen. Uh, is really going after the cloud. And so this is where when I give you proactive tools, it's going to be around your passcode and password security and two-step authentication to help make it extremely difficult for people to hack your uh, accounts and your information. Because the identity theft reality in 2019 is you're more likely to have your identity stolen than your car taken or home burglarized. Right. The average number of hours spent repairing damage from identity theft is 330. Who's got 330 extra hours in a year? Nobody does. It's a big time suck. Credit card fraud. By almost two times, credit card fraud compared to all the other uh, types of fraud is, uh, is a leader. And then the cost of a data breach in the U.S. is over $8 million. And then here's the kicker when I talked about the cloud. Consumers who have left their personal data exposed on public Wi-Fi, that's 87%. So almost 9 out of 10 Americans have left their information unsecure. And that could have been at a library. It could have been at a coffee shop. Uh, it could have been any number of places. Uh, but it been exposed and allowed a, a hacker to get into it and use your information for their own gain and make your life completely miserable. And so what's the information that they're looking for? They're looking for 15 pieces. Some or all of it. So they're looking for name, address, phone number, date of birth, social security number, passport, passport number, credit card numbers, bank account numbers, email account, password history, insurance accounts, employment history, education history, social media accounts. This is important because you have a number of them. Could be Facebook, could be Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, doesn't matter. All of them. And then driver's license numbers. So you have to make sure you keep all 15 of those extremely secure and that can seem a little overwhelming and I totally get that but that's why I'm gonna have a tool for you later on on how to do that so but how do you handle it and so here's the deal here's the funny thing they'll use any or all of it to create what they want to get what they want and so synthetic identity theft is the fastest growing financial crime in the US so here's an example of that this is from the US Attorney's Office in the Eastern District of New York there were 11 defendants in what was called a bust-out scheme. They created synthetic identities and spent $3 million before they ever got caught. None of the money was repaid. And so that's the reason why I used the graphic I used. You can see that there are seven different individuals there. Well, they used one person's name, one person's address, another person's phone number, someone else's date of birth, someone else's social security number, someone else's uh, bank account information, and someone else's uh, what was it? email. It uh, doesn't matter. They used seven different pieces and created synthetic identities and got away with a lot of fraud for a time being until they got caught. And so that's where synthetic identity theft, where you may think, oh, I've got everything covered. All you need is one. All you need is one. It doesn't matter what it is, one from you, 
another thing from person B, person C, person D, person E, F, G, all the way down. And they're just looking for one thing. And when they get it, they can create a lot of different things. And so the, the scams that we see and how they get that information from you is uh, phishing. Uh, phishing is where they like send an email and you click on a link or maybe you click on a, on a uh, attached document and they get information that way. Um, so I'm gonna, in my next slide, I'm gonna show you how to identify that. And I also wanna let you know that phishing is through email, but there's also smishing, which is SMS or texting, and then vishing, which is through voice where they'll call you up. But they use the same tactics. And in my next slide, I'll go through what those tactics are, but I wanna get through the top scams of 2019 first. So we have phishing. There's a Nigerian 419. That's where you're looking for love in all the wrong places. If you have to pay a person for them to love you, that's probably not the relationship you want. Uh, mystery shopping, uh, reshipment and payment processing fraud that's becoming more and more common as uh, people are able to set up their own accounts, whether legitimately or illegitimately, on Etsy, eBay, Amazon, etc. Uh, pump and dump stocks. This one drives me nuts, especially being in the financial services. This is one where you'll get an email uh, that looks like you have insider information on a, on a certain stock and um, you'll go in and buy it and uh, drive the price up and then uh, the people behind the scheme will sell it, take all the gains, and you're left with a worthless stock. Uh, Hitman, remember I said this is one that freaked me out. This is the one. Uh, Hitman is, you get an email that says, hey, I'm an assassin. I'm targeting you unless I get uh, my demands met. And demands could be you know, money, uh, access to different accounts, etc. Can you imagine getting that one when your first thing in the morning before you had your coffee? Scareware, uh, this is the one where you know maybe you're you're online, you know checking sports scores, uh, checking the news. Uh, maybe you're online with family members, uh, but it pops up on your screen like, hey, uh, your computer's gonna crash, or uh, it's gonna get access to all your information unless you call this 800 number or click this link. Uh, that's what that scareware ransomware is gonna be. Uh, crowdfunding, a lot of legitimate uses for crowdfunding. You know when you're trying to raise money for someone with um, sickness or there is an unfortunate event with the family. Those are legitimate things. You do have to be aware that they can use those same platforms for illegitimate ones and seemingly like it is for a good cause. Uh, but they will crowdfund and source it and get all your accounts and just walk away with the money. And you're thinking that, you know, you're trying to help somebody with uh, leukemia, for example. So just be aware of that with crowdfunding. Tech support. This is where you get a phone call saying, hey, um, or tech support for you know somewhere where you have an account try to get your release information that they can use then to create either identity theft uh, on your own complete person or a synthetic version of it a greeting card similar to phishing this is where you click a link within someone giving you like a Christmas card uh, in your email you click a link and you end up uh, giving up information and then there's some honorable mention uh, Bitcoin bank loans tax fraud Social Security fraud Medicare fraud and form jacking Form jacking just basically means um, a form that you would fill out for a survey. Uh, they hijack that information and they take it and uh, use it to uh, defraud people. So that's what form jacking is. And by the way, if you hear a phrase I use that you're unfamiliar with, this is where you can uh, download the glossary that I made and you can pick up on every phrase that I use. So it's quite a helpful tool. One of the things I want to talk about now is, is phishing, uh, the tactics they use. And it's going to be the same tactics, whether it's phishing with email, smishing, SMS with text, or vishing with voice, where they call you. Uh, something looks fake. Maybe it's a fake bill or, or an invoice, an unexpected attachment that you click on, an inconsistent URL. This is where you think it's from your bank, but the bank spelling is like off by one letter. Uh, there's request to update your information. Something's misspelled or poor grammar. Uh, your intuition saying, man, something's just off on this thing. Uh, you'll get a W-2 form request, which should never be digital. Maybe it's an uh, email from your CEO or some other important person in your life. Uh, you've won a contest or there's a tone of desperation. So let me show you what one of those looks like. Uh, you've got, looks like something from your bank, uh, but you can see that the bank is misspelled with their, their uh, missing the A. There's this sense of urgency. It'll say important. Uh, we need you to verify information, but when you hover over this link, it actually takes you to another URL, uh, which has nothing to do with the bank. It's suspicious. And then uh, there's no name. 
So this should, you know, totally throw throw off your alarm bells on, uh, you know, what not to do. You know, delete it, block it, you know, report it for spam, etc. Do not engage with this email. And it's the same thing when you're uh, getting a text or someone's calling. A little bit different when they're calling you because they can try to uh, really dial up the um, the aggression and, um, and making you make a decision which uh, normally you wouldn't make. But just be aware of these tactics of one through ten of how they can do it. Um, and sometimes they'll, they will use uh, threats. Uh, there's a funny one um, on YouTube where uh, there was a phone call vishing uh, went to a captain of the police force in North Carolina, and they said they're going to call the cops, and uh, she was the cop. So it's pretty, pretty interesting how that all uh, transpired. So just you need to know the tactics they're going to use and how they're going to use them across email, phone, and text so that you know how to protect yourself from releasing uh, any information that can be used against you and defraud you. Um, so that's uh, when hackers are kind of going after you. Now you're, we're talking about uh, the top uh, hacks of 2019. There was five of them. And this is where maybe you've done everything right, uh, but a company that you, has your information has done everything wrong. And so we have uh, AMCA, which is better known for Quest Diagnostics, which is uh, medical billing and lab, lab results processing, uh, Citrix, which is a, a firm which is primarily known for virtual private networks, uh, Capital One banking, uh, credit cards, Facebook, Instagram, which is known for its social media, and then First American Title, which is a really big real estate title company. So let's get, dig into some of these and uh, what happened, when it happened, and uh, what could have uh, prevented it. And there's only really three things that, that could have, and it's going to drive you nuts and you realize how simple it could have been. So first, let's talk about Quest Diagnostics. Uh, that's up here in the, in the upper left. That happened in May of 2019, impacted about 25 million people. Uh, this is where, um, you know, people say, well, I, I won't be online, right? Well, guess what? I, I have two of the five up here have nothing to do with you being online. It has everything to do with your information, whether it was medical speaking or real estate speaking. And so this one for AMCA is probably going to bankrupt them. We're kind of monitoring this one as we go along because of the liability that they had with uh, being hacked and uh, releasing that information. Uh, Citric is one. Uh, that happened in March. Uh, that's still being investigated by the FBI. So that impact was unknown at the time. Then Capital One, credit card company, July, that impacted 106 million people. Facebook, it actually was twice. So the year after they had the big Cambridge Analytica uh, scandal, uh, they were hacked again and releasing uh, a lot of records there. So just think about it. If you have Facebook or Instagram, people can know like where you grew up, you know, who your friends are, um, what school you went to, where you live, you know, all those different things. They can, they can glean a lot of information really quickly on, uh, on your person, uh, identity uh, information. Remember the 1 through 15 that I talked about earlier. Then First American Title, this is a huge one. This happened twice, uh, impacted about 885 million people. And the interesting thing about this one, it actually wasn't hacked. It was actually discovered by a real estate developer who noticed when he was trying to log into the system, he could change one or two numbers in the URL, and it would take him to an unsecure part of the company where he could look up all these different records. And ironically is he reported to him, and they kind of rebuffed him, and it wasn't until he reported to a investigative journalist who specializes in cybersecurity uh, did all this come out. And uh, it's really frustrating when that happens because you would think uh, companies would take security uh, extremely seriously, especially with all the hacks that were going on. And they didn't. And all, all of these could have been prevented by uh, three things. And you'll see them right below you at the bottom. Timely upgrades to their uh, systems timely security patches, and then training employees on best security practices. So I already gave you the one on phishing. Like if employees just did that, they would be so much better off uh, protecting their companies and the information that they have um, with everything. And then it's up to IT just to do the upgrades and timely security patches. So um, when you're dealing with other companies or you're dealing with healthcare or bank or whatever, it's it's totally fine to ask them how they're keeping your information safe. Uh, people ask us and we're happy to uh, provide that answer and I will provide that answer on how Client First keeps your information safe a little la later on in the presentation. 
Now I want to move on to uh, some consumer privacy regulations. I talked about two last year. Uh, the first one was the uh, European Union General Data Protection Regulation, uh, which went live in May of 2018. Uh, then the other big one was the Consu uh, California Consumer Privacy Act, or CCPA, which actually went uh, live uh, January of 2020. You can see the links there if you want to take a look. Uh, I think both have very good intentions. Um, some can be very overbearing uh, for companies to, uh, to implement. So I know a, n a number of friends and a number of different companies, uh, regardless of scale and size and location across the world, just having to deal with that. Uh, but I think it's for good things. I think there's some things that both will learn along the way, which they might want to modify, uh, but we'll see what they do. But interestingly enough, uh, we got some copycats here in the U.S., uh, particularly around uh, Illinois, New York, Nevada, and Vermont. And it's interesting which states kind of uh, knew that California was going to go uh, online or live with this, shall we say, in January of 2020 and <laughs> try to get in first in October or January and kind of um, retroactively make it happen. Interestingly enough, or interestingly enough, I should say, uh, there really is bipartisan support at the federal level for tougher regulations, uh, particularly around health and biometric data. Uh, there's a couple of proposals in the Senate Commerce Committee um, trying to make a, a, a uniform uh, consumer privacy and data protection uh, regulation for everyone to abide by. Um, but, you know, with the CCPA, uh, you kind of have states' rights versus federal. So it's making things a little more difficult, but I believe in the, the next year or two, you'll probably have something that'll uh, be across um, all states when it comes to that and make it easier for companies to be able to help you with their data security and data privacy uh, so they don't have 50 different versions they have to worry about. So that's a little bit about the regulations. Uh, seven things we're keeping an eye on in 2020. Uh, smishing, so I talked about that. That is uh, texting, uh, using those same tactics I, I talked about early, earlier in the slide for phishing. Uh, weaponized drones on public Wi-Fi, I'll talk more about that in a, in a second. Disruptive deep fakes. Hacktivism, uh, more social sharing creates more fraudsters. Uh, I think more states will introduce some past data protection laws, and I really believe uh, the federal data privacy law will grow louder. So let's take it one at a time. Smishing, um, this is where they're going to start texting you, trying to get you to release information with a link um, through, your, through your text. So just be aware of the tactics. I already, I already highlighted them. Uh, weaponized drones, this is... Um, Really interesting. Uh, so drones are fun. They're cool to play with. They create great video for sporting events, um, for uh, you know corporate um, videos, for recruitment videos. You know all sorts of fun things that you can use them for. Well, now they're using them for. All right, there's an unsecured network at this coffee shop. I'm gonna fly a drone about a hundred yards away. No one's gonna know it's there, and I'm gonna have technology on that drone, which now I can access that. Uh, unsecured Wi-Fi, and anyone who's on it, I can get access to their information. So that's weaponizing drones. So that's why, A, don't go on a public Wi-Fi, and B, um, you know, always have the uh, right passwords to protect all your accounts. I'm going to show you how to do that here in a, in a little bit. Disruptive deep fakes. This is where someone takes a, um, a video and puts someone else's face on it, uh, in this case, they use Mark Zuckerberg just as an example for Facebook. It could be a politician. It could be, um, you know, another athlete where um, it's either used to either blackmail that person or is used to kind of influence the public for a wrong decision and create a little hysteria. So you really need to be careful of what you're viewing and the authenticity, authenticity pardon me, of, of what you're viewing. Hacktivism. Uh, this is where uh, maybe you have a group which... Uh, has skills that can be used for the good, but instead they're going to use it for bad, and they have a company that they don't like or appreciate, so they go in and try to hack that account. You know, maybe they're upset at Amazon for becoming too big, uh, whatever too big means. Uh, maybe they're upset at, you know, somebody who sells, uh, you know, CBD products because they feel like CBD shouldn't be sold or anything related to, uh, to, uh, to marijuana. Or maybe it's something where, like, they don't like the uh, labor practices that they have, so they're going to hack... Uh, an athletic shoe company. So that would be an example of, of hacktivism um, that's going to be uh, more and more on the rise here as we move forward. 
this is one which is really concerning. This is um, social media creating more fraudsters. So this is where you have a musician um, that sings or raps about um, how to create fraud or they show examples of how they've done it and share it on social media. Uh, you can go on YouTube channel right now and if you want to look up the fraud Bible, um, you'll see an example of that where you can download it and there's 36 ways to create fraud. Um, whether it's uh, the person living next to you, the person working next to you, or someone that you don't even know that lives in another state. Uh, so this is where people can share it really quickly uh, because there's a lot of different social media platforms out there um, on how to create fraud, and so now there's more sharing. So people may try it out just to have fun, thinking they're having fun on a weekend, um, to someone who takes it more seriously and going, hey, this, this works now. I can. I thought I was getting like 100 bucks or 200 bucks. now I'm into thousands of dollars. So this is where you have to be very careful on how, who's got access to your information and how you're protecting it. So the fifth one I talked about there was social media sharing and how to create fraud. And then the last two are really on regulations. I talked a little bit already about the imitations at the state level for uh, consumer privacy and data protection laws. And I also talked about uh, the federal version, which I believe is probably going to happen in the next year or two uh, in the U.S. Now, the long-awaited toolkits, which I've talked about to defend yourself. There's going to be a, a proactive set, and there's going to be a reactive set, meaning you know what to do when something happens to you. So let's talk about the proactive set first. Um, this is where you want to create um, like a restricted area for everything. And really, it, it ends up being um, your new normal, meaning if you have just daily discipline, weekly discipline, monthly discipline, on doing these steps, you're going to be far better off um, against fraud, fraudsters and hackers. You're just making it difficult for you to be compromised. So what I want you to do is let's just work down the list with me. I want you to get your password manager. I want you changing your password regularly. So making sure your password's over 12 characters, ideally 14. I'll get why in a second. But changing them regularly means like every 90 days, so once a quarter. I want you using two-step authentication, setting up a Google alert for your name, make a credit card your primary spending vehicle, reviewing your accounts and statements on a regular basis, mind your surroundings and your settings. You can order a free credit report every four months. So there's three of them, and you can do it once a year. So if you do, for example, um, TransUnion in January, uh, you can do another one in May uh, with um, Experian and maybe do Equifax toward the end of the year. So you can um, check, check it out um, every four months. I really want you to strongly consider credit monitoring service, securing your smart devices, both your access and your settings. So when I say devices, this is your tablets, this is your smartphones, this is your, if you have Nest or Ring devices or, or temperature devices at home, uh, securing your Wi-Fi, and then making sure you're shredding and deleting. Everybody should be shredding. Um, any bank account, any credit card offer they get in the mail, anything with any personal information you have, you should be shredding it. Or if you want to use a burn barrel outside, that's fine. Uh, we get that a lot uh, with people that are kind of uh, rural areas. Uh, but everybody should be having a, a, some way to dispose of uh, permanently um, any, any paper that has potentially has your information on it. So let me dive into passcodes here really quickly. You know, why... Why 12 or more characters? It's really just a matter of time. Uh, if you just have seven characters, uh, it takes less than a second to crack into that. And when I say that, you know, you can go online and buy $3,000 worth of equipment and create um, a system to crack passcodes. And so this is where having 12 characters or more uh, creates like two centuries of time to take to, to crack it. So ideally you're using letters, numbers, and symbols for your passcodes. Then I want you to make sure you're updating your antivirus spyware and firewall on your devices. I have this website you can go to where you can click on it and it'll show you the best ones to use. And that reminds me to tell you, um, anything you've seen here, I'm not going to recommend a specific company or service. I'm gonna give you resources where you can do your own research on which one's best, best for you. For example, there's one on spyware. Uh, you'll have another one on uh, what password managers to use. 
you'll have another one on what identity monitoring services to use. So uh, I'm going to be giving you those uh, resources. You can make the choice on which one to use and which one's best for you. So there's going to be free versions and there's going to be paid for versions. And you usually get what you pay for. I use all of them and I really appreciate the help that I've, that I've gotten. Reminder, this is 2020. Make sure you use 2020 on your uh, documents. You don't want somebody grabbing one of your checks and putting a different year on it that could be used to establish fraud. So thankfully, I've seen a lot of it. I've seen a lot of clients uh, when they're writing out their checks, they're using 2020. Really appreciate that. So make sure you do that um, every year uh, moving forward so no one can use a check for um, ill-gotten gain. All right, now onto the handy dandy toolkit. First, uh, get a password manager. So there's the link for that. The password manager will, will live uh, on your computer and then they'll, they'll create the 12 to 14 multi-character, uh, multi-symbol password. And you should have a different one for each of your um, platforms that you go into. What I mean by, for example, your Facebook passcode should be different than your bank passcode, which should be different than your email passcode, which should be different than your online shopping passcode. Those are the examples. Resetting your passcodes, please do that every 90 days. Two-factor authentication. Uh, you can do it one of two ways. You could do it one where you have the system uh, send you a text with a code. Uh, that's one way to do it. Or Google has a really cool authenticator, which can be used for Apple or, or Android devices, uh, where it creates a six-digit passcode that you plug in. Um, and those passcodes show uh, pass. I'm sorry, those authenticator um, numbers show up um, on a time basis, and it deletes itself. So that's very helpful. Uh, set up a Google alert for your name. There's the website on how to do that. Uh, you don't want to show up in an obituary and you're still alive. Uh, so that would be a clear indication that uh, your information has been compromised. Securing your smartphone. Um, you should be using six. Um, six symbols or letters or numbers, whatever it is for your smartphone, please don't use your birth date uh, for that. But that uh, that website I provide there will give you information on how to do that. Uh, securing your smart home. So if you have, um, like I said, uh, smart, smart assistant in there, like Amazon Alexa or Google Home, uh, if you have smart temperature uh, devices, if you have uh, Ring or Nest, uh, those will give you, uh, that website will give you um, ways on how to secure your your home. And then securing your Wi-Fi, same thing. There's another uh, URL you can go to to check that out. Uh, please, 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 um, when you have it at your home, please, number one, have it secure. And then two, uh, I also recommend having um, a password for yourself or your family members. And if you have guests come over, have an a guest version as well so you're not giving out your, your passcode um, so you don't have to worry about if you're doing um, banking shall we say uh, someone else isn't compromising information even though you think they're a friend uh, I already talked about getting a free credit report you can do that once every four months you know January July October for example you can do that at annualcreditreport.com uh, consider credit monitoring uh, there's another link that'll show you um, compare and contrast on the different monitoring services and then lastly shred 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 um, on a regular basis uh, any piece of paper that may have any information that you have on it even if you think it's like a credit card offer and I'm just gonna throw it away you'd be surprised by the amount of people that that check garbage or dumpster dive and it'll take one of those and even though it may be ripped up they'll tape it together write information on there and it'll still be accepted They've opened up a credit card in your name. So that is the uh, proactive toolkit to use to make it hard for people to get at your information. This really falls in the, uh, of the three M's I talked earlier, this falls into the uh, minimize and monitor areas. And I want to talk about managing the damage when something happens to you. So here is the steps I want you to take. Um, I want you to have the Federal Trade Commission contact information, um, all the contact information for the credit agencies, Social Security, your local sheriff. You'll need to write that in because everyone's located in a different uh, jurisdiction, so you'll need to know which one is your sheriff or your police. 
uh, your bank contact info, your credit card info, uh, United States Postal Inspection Service, uh, changing your pins and passcodes, particularly for your ATM cards, and then reporting robocalls. So here is a reactive handy dandy toolkit. So here's all the information for Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. You have the 800 number, and then you have the website as well. Some people prefer to do it online. Other people prefer the 800 number, especially if you want to freeze your credit. I'm certainly able to do that with all three of them. Here's the information for the Federal Trade Commission. Uh, they have a nice site called identitytheft.gov that you can use if you feel you've been a victim of identity theft. Uh, you'll need to write in your local police, the name, phone number, and website. Here's the information for the Social Security Inspector General, the 800 number and the website, along with the U.S. Treasury Inspector General, 800 number and the website. Uh, do not call, 800 number and the, and the website. Um, I would actually recommend putting your mobile phone and your family's, all your family members' mobile phones um, in that right now. You don't want to get robocalls or even spam calls. It's just a hassle to have to deal with. Here's the U.S. Inspector Service, 800 number and uh, website. This is especially helpful if you, um, you feel like there's been fraud via mail. There's some things that are in play then from a legal standpoint, which can be to your benefit, especially because somebody uses the United States Postal Service to, to commit fraud. For those that live in Wisconsin, I have the uh, Wisconsin version uh, there for the 800 number and the website. Uh, and then you'll need to write in your bank and credit card number information. So if you have these tools uh, available right away, then when identity theft does happen, um, you're able to take action very, very quickly. And ideally, all the steps I'm about to give you, it happens within 24 hours. So the first thing I want you to do is place a, a fraud alert, pardon me, with the companies you know fraud occurred. So if something happened with your credit card, please alert the credit card right away that fraud happened. Then I want you to go get your credit reports from each of the three uh, credit reporting companies. You need to report identity theft to the Federal Trade Commission, which I gave you that information on the slide prior. And all three then will allow you to file a report with your local police department. So all four of those together uh, create an identity theft recovery plan, and then that can be used to recover um, your the fraud that happened and also using with insurance uh, when something happens. So there's the website you can go uh, with the complete identity theft recovery plan. Uh, that's there below. Two more bonus uh, tools I talked about earlier. I alluded to them. Uh, personal identity theft risk assessment. I'll have a link to that in the comments below. Uh, that'll give you a quiz. It's 20 questions on how well you're doing with protecting your own information. That'll be pretty eye-opening for a lot of people. Uh, some people may be on track. Other people are going to be off track. Uh, either way, you'll know what to do and what to fix because everything will tie back to your toolkits, whether it's a proactive toolkit or the reactive toolkit. And the second tool I have for you is Identity Theft Glossary. That has a number of terms that you're going to hear and see either from me or throughout um, your research or you may just hear it in the, in, in the media or, or see it online. You know exactly what they mean. So there's some bonus tools for you. And for those that travel, here's kind of a pro tip. Uh, this one's called juice jacking. Uh, why is it called juice jacking? Uh, you're trying to power up your phone or device and uh, it gets hijacked. So what's happening is, let's say you're traveling in an airport and you, you gotta plug your phone in and um, there's a public uh, power station uh, which looks legitimate, but really behind the power source, it's really ex exfiltrating data from your device or uploading malware. Uh, so all of a sudden you're just tired, you're trying to get home, you just need to plug in your phone, check in with family, and uh, your device was compromised all because you just thought you're you're gonna power it up. So a solution is two. One, you can either just avoid public chargers, or two, you can get yourself what's called a USB condom. Yes, that's a real name. Uh, it's also called a data blocker. Uh, that's available for 10 to 20 bucks on Amazon. It really just fits on the front end of it. And um, the only thing allows to uh, allows to uh, flow through is just power. It doesn't allow any data to happen. So that's a little pro tip for those that travel a lot. I know I used to travel a lot myself uh, professionally. Now I just get to do it personally. Um, and so I'll still use these to um, protect myself and my devices. So a quick pause for questions. These are the most common questions that I get. Uh, so let me just walk them through real quick. Uh, what common habits put me at the most risk? Uh, really, it's just being lazy or thinking it's not going to happen to you. 
Uh, if you do the daily disciplines, the weekly disciplines, the monthly disciplines of what I just showed you, you're going to create a uh, pretty formidable um, protection ring around you and a hacker or a frost will probably just go to another target. Biggest myth uh, out there about identity theft, um, like I said, it's not going to happen to me. Um, you know, the minute you think it's not going to happen to you is when you're, you're at most risk. So again, it's just daily and weekly and monthly diligence uh, about taking care of your information. What are the feds doing about identity theft laws? Um, I already mentioned that earlier. I think in the next year to three, there'll probably a federal version uh, similar or a flavor close to uh, the European version or the California version. We'll see about that. While the fuss about the dark web, well, the dark web is where all the bad guys are hanging out. So I just want you to be aware of it. Uh, that's where all the compromised data is. It's available for sale. I don't want you going on the dark web because um, that uh, opens up a whole other can of worms. But you just need to be aware of it and the fact that you know people are using it for fraud or for bad activities. And the fifth one is I just won't go online. They won't find me or will they? Well, of the five biggest hacks that I walked through, uh, one was around a medical company, one was around a title company. And so uh, they gained access to information even if you weren't online. So you have to be proactive and you have to know what your tools are and you have to be disciplined in taking care of, of your information. And speaking of taking care of information, a lot of people ask then, how does client first keep my information safe? We use password managers, two-factor two authentication. Uh, we have antivirus that gets updated daily. Uh, we use 256 encryption, which takes like forever to try to beat. And then we have a whole host of other badges of uh, keeping everything secure uh, for your information. So the key takeaways uh, from today, I mentioned them earlier, but let's see them uh, right in front of our eyes. I want you to minimize your risk exposure by using different passcodes and avoiding sending sensitive information across unsecured networks. I want you to monitor your money and credit scores, check your credit, bank, benefit, and medical accounts, and scrutinize every transaction. And then managing the damage if you're compromised. Notify the authorities immediately to create an identity theft report and begin to recover your losses. So here is those two toolkits. Uh, one is proactive, one is reactive. And like I said, uh, they'll be available for download. I'll have that link um, in the comments below on this YouTube uh, link everything available digitally. So I want to thank you for spending some time with me and using, uh, using it to learn more about you know, what's happening in the world of identity theft, uh, consumer privacy, and data security. Um, like I mentioned before, you probably saw some information which causes concern, makes you upset, maybe scared, maybe ticked off. Um, all the same, you now have the knowledge, you have the tools, and you have the mindset of how to take care of yourself. So use it to your advantage and um, you know, we'll look forward to seeing you next time. So we're going to close things out here. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, we appreciate uh, people that come to the live presentation and people that are viewing this. Uh, for those that are at the live, uh, they can actually give us feedback on everything, which we love, or how we can help them. Uh, you'll see next month, you, we, we do an education event every month. Uh, January was uh, the markets with our adaptive investment management system. That's with David Zarling. I just did one on identity theft. Next month is going to be Chris Walla on the best practices on auto, home, and recreation. Speaking of him, there he is. Really knows insurance really well. World-class bear hugger. Uh, he looks like our bouncer, but he's a big teddy bear. Uh, we love him a lot. Clients love him a lot. Um, and so he's going to talk about insurance. And you can see all the pieces that fit into your uh, true holistic plan. If you ever have any questions on those, uh, we can certainly help. And we know it's tax time, so we've got our tax preparation special is back. We look forward to seeing you this year. For those 50 and above, $79 for uh, federal, state, and uh, for filings. Uh, for those uh, 49 and below, it's 149 So we'd love to see you. Um, a lot of people have been back already, so it's been great. So it's good to see a lot of cool faces. Uh, we look forward to seeing you. And we took a nice team picture. So there we all are from our uh, tax team to our investment team to our financial planning team and um, operations team. And, and uh, once you know, like the week after that, uh, we hire a new team member. So we're, we're excited for Nick to join us. He's from Hubertus, um, economics degree from uh, UW Oshkosh. You're going to see him around the office 
Uh, he's playing a utility role for us in a lot of different parts of our business. And super talented kid, um, loves hunting, loves fishing, really good with the numbers, uh, really good with people. Um, some of you may recognize him from uh, from some of the places he's worked around here during his uh, you know jobs during college. Uh, but he's here, uh, so uh, if you see him, say hello and welcome him to the team. And then finally, if you've got any questions for us, like I mentioned before, we help people secure the financial confidence they're looking for and deserve, uh, so we can help do that. Instead of running around for you know seven different places for all those financial pieces, you can do it all here uh, at one place. So feel free to schedule a no-fee initial consultation to see how true holistic planning can help you. With that, we're going to conclude. Thanks again for listening and watching and learning, and we look forward to seeing you in person or uh, online. Take care and have a great rest of the day.